So the, you mentioned there, and I, I love that, and I've heard you speak about it before, and I love your views on this. It was sexy. It wasn't sexy to be an entrepreneur. Now it is sexy to be yeah. an entrepreneur. Yeah. Talk to me about that. Well, I used to be a bit more sort of, um, uh, what's the word? Punching provocative about this. So we live in a world where entrepreneurism is fetishized and it's driven by a number of factors. We've had 0% interest rates forever, so there's loads and loads of cheap money about. It's obviously sexy to do, um, but really there's just been this flood of capital. Obviously, um, we've got open networks now. We've got ubiquity of technology everywhere with mobile phones in our pockets, cloud, you know, the world connected. So we've got a confluence of factors like never before, which has made it easier than ever to be an entrepreneur. But what that also means is people who should never really be entrepreneurs because they're doing it because they want a sexy life and they want a ping pong table and they want to be in the papers are becoming entrepreneurs. So it's just like anything, right? You have a f new thing that becomes really interesting and really big in the world and it attracts a whole wide range of people. So I've talked before, which is we live in the greatest era of fake entrepreneurs we've ever seen. But what is also true is we live in a point of greatest opportunity we've ever seen. I'm really interested in how nowadays you can take kids out of school, you can take kids who thought they would never be anything, and you can easily plug them into the matrix. You can take, I was speaking to a guy called Mario, who runs a, 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 a company start thing out of um, a company called Demium, and they're finding kids from Belarus and Uzbekistan and Romania, all over the world, because they're just finding raw talent who just have not been given the access and mainly the belief. So I hold two views. Fake entrepreneurs, loads of them massively on the rise. Huge opportunity for kids who maybe haven't had a great start in life, who, who have just thought they might never make anything, to be given opportunities to be all they can be, and largely just through belief. If they can find somewhere early in their life where they can, someone can go, you're good, you can go here, when they've never been told they're good before, and, you know, someone maybe with my network and other people, you can just start plugging them into the system. It's incredible what that can do for, 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 for somebody. And I think that, back to my point about true self, I think that I see so many people who just have not been brought up believing that they can. Yeah. Um, and hence, they just haven't got the picture of the world that they can. I think, I, I actually think the key to everything is expanding the, brain space of what's possible making painting the picture of what somebody can be repeating it in their head so that they believe it and i think one of the things that the mark zuckerberg thing the travis Kalanick thing has done is made people believe that yeah i can do it from being a kid i think that that role model thing in the world has had a huge effect too yeah hugely so on that you mentioned really quickly like you said i the wrong reason to start to be an entrepreneur is that you want uh, a ping pong table. Um, what is the what is the right reason to be an entrepreneur? You can't not. So, so my thing on entrepreneurs, like, I don't even think of myself as an entrepreneur. Like, I've started a fund, I've started a company. I don't think I'm like, tr I don't think I'm that noble warrior who like takes the pain every day because I absolutely have to see something happen. And really true entrepreneurship, like it's really true entrepreneurship, it's a, it's a, it's an equation on risk, isn't it? How much risk are you willing to take? But the, 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 certainly the entrepreneurs I love, my truest definition of entrepreneurs, is people who just can't not. They have problem, they see problem, and they cannot rest until it's done. And entrepreneurs are fundamentally artists. They're creative people. They have to see something change in the world or they can't sleep. Like it's a disease, um, but in the very best way. Uh, so yeah, like... You know, it's a real trite thing to say we love mission-driven entrepreneurs, right? Because every VC plus on their website trying to differentiate, even though all VC websites look the same. Um, but 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 that is true. And the, one of the reasons why being mission-driven is so critical to being an entrepreneur is it's fucking shit. And you need to be a cockroach. When it is at its hardest, are you going to be there, speak to your team and go, we have a really shit situation here. We're running out of money. We need to deliver this by then. And are you going to be that cockroach? Or at the first time of trouble, are you going to just fold and die? And 
I personally love the mission-driven people because for me, it does two things. One, it enables them to hire the best people. Um, missionaries tend to attract other missionaries, and I would rather have missionaries working for my business than mercenaries. Okay, so they tend to attract the best talent. They tend to be the people that people want to be around. Second is that they just won't um, they won't give up. Um, and yeah, those are actually probably the two biggest reasons. The, the two big ones. Yeah, I love that. I think it's inspired. <laughs>